And so we will now move on to our uh, last session of the morning, uh, which is about the quality of e-books. So, oh yeah, <laughs> I'll take the pointer. Uh, so I will now call Louis Marl uh, from Albert Michel and Vincent Gros from Hachette, who are both representing now the French Publisher Association Norman Standard Group, and who are going to tell us about the quality of e-books as a whole. And I'll let you present all of this. Well. Good morning, everyone. Uh, first, I must uh, apologize because this is the first time I uh, do a presentation in English in front of uh, more than two people. The last time it was uh, 35 years ago uh, with my teacher, and uh, the note uh, was not very good. So, <laughs> forgive me for my accent, my English, and uh, if I'm wrong with the words. For example, uh, in the name of the Holy Ghost, <laughs> and not the Holy Ghost. So, <laughs> I'm here to represent the syndicate, the syndicate national, the syndicate national de l'édition, the national syndicate of the French publisher that represents the French, the French publishing industry, with over 700 members and uh, accounting 80% of French publishing sales. The syndicate is itself divided into tw uh, 19 groups and commissions, and uh, like we and uh, like we like in uh, France, the, uh, these commissions are divided into various working groups. The most important group is, of course, Norm et Standard, Norms and Standards Working Group, not because I am proud to represent it, but because this group have produced since 2008 a large number of reports, run numerous workshops about the various forms of EPUB, about the metadata, Onyx, Dublin Curl, and so on, about the identifiers, ISBN, EIN, and so on, and about reference systems. We always search our working group in terms of all the players in the book chain, from the editor to the reader, the end user, if you want, passing by the publisher, the typewriter, the aggregators, and the retailers. Our main goal is a pedagogical one. Translate, summarize, explain all the documentation about the digital book. And sometimes, sometime, we are like uh, the prophet who said, uh, I am the voice shouting into the desert land. So, we, uh, we, we uh, go again because the pedagogy is the art of the repetition and we are really artists. We have to convince all the people in the chain industry. But as Machiavel said, all armored prophets have been victorious. So that's our group. <laughs> This is uh, Virginie Clayson in, in the first. Uh, <laughs> so now, anyway, since now eight years, the main focus is accessibility. It's become our mantra. We only, see, we only think about accessibility in our group. In the group. In the group, we have explained to the world of the French publisher that it was and it is cr a crucial step for the digital publication, especially with the, the entry of the European Accessibility Act. Every department of our service in the publishing house must be involved in the production of a digital book, of an accessible digital book. 
it's very important and perhaps the most important to persuade all of them that they are the crew of the same ship and that they must follow, not the white rabbit, like you can see, but the same goal, the same objective. And this objective is 2025. That's the next year the European Accessibility Act comes into effect. So for most of publishers, this is an odyssey. Fortunately, I said all armed prophets have been victorious. We made some weapon, weapon, weapons, sorry, some tool for the publisher. Exactly, we have three tools, a technical charter to produce born accessible, referable EPUBs, a summary document about alternative text and image, and EPUB test to show how to implement the accessibility features. The technical charters contain detailed functional and technical specification implementation example and a webography of accessibility standards. There will be a new release soon because reference systems are evolving. The summary document explains everything you need about non-textual elements in a digital publication. In which, case, in, in which case do we need a textual alternative, long or short, how to implement it and render it in an EPUB without JavaScript? To summarize, the main key about a non-textual element is the context. And the third tool is an EPUB test. <laughs> This EPUB test takes all the uh, technical charter and it works very fine with Torium, except for the foreign language like uh, Greek, ancient Greek, and Latin. And uh, we tried to, did some, uh, to do uh, some version with a foreign language like the mark the, in English, the mark of the four. In uh, auf Deutsch, das Zeichen der Vier, und in Italian too. But I think there is a problem. <laughs> After all this work, we had, we had the strange feeling that something was missing. The charters were intended more for graphic designers and book typesetting companies. In other words, more for technical specialists. But there's more to publishing world than just the technical side of things, especially when, when it comes to accessibility. As we said earlier, all departments of a publishing house need to be bored on the same boat, to be part of the same crew. That's why, inspired by the internet experience, we decided to find a tool to bring them all together and govern them all. After a lot of brainstorming, we found that we had three needs. The first need, a common language to avoid confusion in the world of publisher. For example, this is a dialogue with, between two people. For uh, those who uh, have seen the movie Red Man, you will remember something. Because what and who are the name of the player, of, of baseball player? So it is very difficult to understand what people say to each other. And Mark Twain, another quote, the difference between the right world and the almost right world is the difference between lightning and a lightning bug. 
the second need is to be modular and to be modular enough to be used as a checklist at every stage of the book of the production of the book this is like that like a lego you can put the bricks together to make another thing and I take the plane as example because the plane has a pilot and the pilot has a checklist. Every pilot, even if he, play, he learned to fly since a long time ago, he has to check flaps, governs, motors, all tanks and so on each time before uh, 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 before takeoff. And another quote, another quote too. I take this example because this is a toy and Schiller and a German uh, playwright and poet said once, man is only fully human when he plays. Well, and the third need was to be user friendly enough to be used by everyone. Well, no, it's your turn. Thank you, Louis. So before talking about the solution we would like to propose, uh, I would like to talk about uh, our source, our source of inspiration, which is Opquest. Um, so all the, the, the needs mentioned by Louis are covered by the work made by Opquest, but not for ebooks, for the web. You may not know Opquest. It's a French company that was created over 20 years ago by Alice Loim and focused on making the web better. The name Opquest stands for Open Quality Standards. The company provides several things and uh, you can find them on the website www.opquest.com and I use some screenshots to, screenshots to illustrate the, the several things. So they provide a certification dedicated to uh, measuring the degree of quality assurance in web and digital projects. This certification is based on uh, training split in several modules and if you want to explore it you can try the first module online for free. There is also a model called uh, VPTCAs to understand quality as assurance for the web. Uh, I won't go into the details but uh, for instance the V is for uh, visibility and the last character uh, S is for services. And most importantly, the certification is based on a quality assurance checklist, which is the core of Opquest work. In 2004, uh, Opquest published the first checklist of web quality assurance. The current version is version 4 and contains 240 rules. These rules are not only about accessibility, Opquest rules cover the key major areas of uh, risk that can negatively affect website users, such as privacy, eco-design, security, performance, and accessibility. Let's see how a rule is structured with the example of rule 113. So there's always a title that describes uh, shortly what the rule is for. Uh, here the title is each information carrying image has an appropriate text alternative. That rule sounds very familiar for us, I suppose. The title is followed by a short introduction with uh, keywords, with uh, tags, and uh, then the body of the rule contains three parts, the goal of the rule, uh, 
its implementation and the controls needed to validate the rule. Most of the time, the content of each part, goal implementation and control, is written using lists. It's easy to understand, it's fast to read, and it works for everyone, technical users and non-technical users, graphists, uh, web developers, students, learners, and many more. And the cherry on the cake is that OpQuest checklist is under open license. So we can reuse it for ebooks for our own objectives, our own needs. We started last summer. In the first days of the project, we called it Calinum. It's a French acronym, and Calinum uh, stands for Qualité du Livre Numérique. Uh, but we wanted the project to benefit everyone and to quote Ludwig Wittgenstein, the limits of my language are the limits of my world. So even if Stephen King thinks that French is the language that turns dirt into romance, we've named the project in English and it's now Qualibook for quality of ebooks. Uh, so since last summer, we uh, last summer we cleaned the rules that are not for ebooks. For example, uh, rules about e-commerce, and I did uh, new rules for ebooks. Uh, for example, to explain backward compatibility with EPUB2. Today, uh, right now, our checklist contains around 90 rules, split in 12 categories. All the members of the working group uh, are involved to rewrite the rules. We keep the original structure, but we adapt the content for the publishing industry. We, we've built a website uh, host by EDR Lab, thanks to Gauthier. Uh, mostly in French, but some parts are already in English. Uh, you can see a screenshot of the website. Uh, this page shows all the rules and uh, there's the list of uh, the categories at the right of the page. You can click on one category, for example, or for example, images and media, and check the rules for this particular category. And to compare with OpQuest, uh, if you have a good eyes, the rule 113 from OpQuest is now the rule 24 uh, in QualiBook. So the structure remains the same for uh, the rules, uh, the, the same than uh, OpQuest for, for each rule. So we have the title, introduction, uh, the goal, implementation and control, and uh, we put uh, the tags at the end of the rule. For the next months, we plan to finish the French uh, version. We will add specific new information. For example, we think we will add if EPUB check or ACE can validate uh, the rule. Um, maybe connect each rule with our references, uh, the, the most important ones, like the, our um, French charter on accessibility, the DAISY knowledge base, and maybe other references uh, in the future. We uh, plan to finish the English version uh, as well and the website, hopefully for the Frankfurt Book Fair, so by the end of the year. If you want to know more about this project, you can ask your questions right now uh, or during the lunch. Uh, there's uh, Gauthier, Louis, um, a lot of members of the, group, the working group actually in the audience, so uh, feel free to, to ask any questions you can have. Thank you. So we are now taking questions. No questions. <laughs> yes. 
Yeah, um, ni nice presentation. Thank you. So I, I think one of the strengths of uh, OpQuest is that their certification uh, is almost an industry standard in, in France, and it helps uh, bringing accessibility expertise in in the uh, companies. Uh, so do you intend to copy that model and propose a, a certification for um, ebook producers, ebook developers for uh, people who will be hired by publishers and help uh, build up this accessibility expertise in-house? Yeah, this is an idea we have in mind. I don't know, Gauthier, if you want to, to talk about it. No. Uh, we actually, thanks to Gauthier, we, we talked with uh, Elis Loim, so the, the, the founder of uh, OpQuest, and we think about using the, the This Work Quality Book uh, for uh, the, 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 the formation, the, the, the trainings uh, in universities and, uh, and, and so on, and maybe to think about a certification, but it's, uh, we are in the early stage of the ID, but uh, yes, it's uh, maybe it's a you know, possibility. It depends on the license uh, as well for from uh, OpQuest. Is there any other question? Don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we'll now end the session then. Uh, as Laurent said, uh, lunch is not ready yet to be absolutely transparent. The caterer was stuck in traffic for a while. So uh, we are now going to have a, a break before going to the lunch. So the lunch should be there in about 20 minutes. Some, yeah something like that so please feel free to um, take a break uh, I think there might still be some coffee left uh, the restroom are in the left door <laughs> when you exit uh, and we gather again for lunch in uh, so in 20 minutes and then uh, this afternoon for the first session which is at 1 30 thank you, thank you.